guys, welcome back to Rusted Horsepower. So this video that I got coming up, it's basically like a continuation to the engine removal video, the engine repairs part one. And I basically took some parts, mocked them up, and see how they would fit. Let's check it out. So the mystery headers actually fit. I've been hoarding those headers for a very long time. A friend of mine gave them to me whenever I was working nights and it was always a mystery what the headers went to. We knew they were small block, small block Chevrolet, but we didn't know what application they were for. But uh, as you can see, I, they obviously clear the cross member. Uh, I checked the clearance on both passenger and driver side, make sure it, it uh, cleared the uh, control arm bosses. And uh, the only little issues that I see is uh, the driver side header is a little beaten up, so I might need to take care of some things on that. The uh, same header, the it comes really close to the brake lines and the combination valve, so I'll probably have to move that around. Um, up top, the same header, you can see where it gets really close to the uh, steering intermediate shaft, so I'll probably have to dimple one of the primaries and, and kind of give it some more clearance there. On the passenger side, that header seems pretty complete, not beaten up or anything, but I, I did have an issue where the uh, a while back I had a trans leak a long time ago, and instead of just replacing the lines the way the factory had them routed through the frame, I actually just built hard lines on top of it. I was daily driving the car to work. I needed the car to work, so I just went ahead and built some hard lines and just left them there next to the manifold. That's all got to be changed. I don't want those. I don't even, not even comfortable with them sitting that close to the manifold, but especially with the headers, I'm going to change all that, put it back to the factory way. And in the back, it's really hard to see, but the uh, trans lines, once they go to the transmission, they come real close to the collector. So I'll probably bring that up closer to the body so it's not an issue. But it is pretty neat how the uh, transmission cross member has reliefs to basically for bigger exhausts or almost seems like the headers were meant to be there. But like I said, I'm going to be trying to take care of all this stuff before actually putting the headers in, and which is part of the reason why I did this whole mock-up 
instead of just breaking the manifolds off the original engine, I used this mock-up motor to be able to size up the headers, see what clearance issues I might have, and if they actually fit. But, good deal, they actually fit. So, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull the, pull the mock-up engine back out, the headers off, that way I can fix the headers, do whatever clearances I need to. At the same time, there, there's some issues like around the cross member that I want to take care of. Uh, like I said, moving those brake lines and stuff like that. Uh, with the engine, I'm going to go ahead and fix those oil leaks and put the engine back in as soon as possible. So one of the most obvious things that I need to do is I need to move this combination valve and clearance the lines, give a little bit more room for the headers. That's going to involve moving the combination valve. And one of the things that I did when I first assembled this car and put new brake lines in is the two front circuits are actually on wrong. I was pretty excited to get the car back to drive and I made that silly mistake. But this circuit to the left should be up here to be more direct and this one should be underneath so that I'm gonna have to unbolt both of those possibly do some bending to the lines and fix that that's gonna actually give it more room and be able to push the valve further back the rear line might have to move also So I'm kind of looking at the brake fluid that came out of it. It's a good thing that I did actually kind of drain most of it out. It looks pretty old, yellowish and brownish. So I'll probably just get rid of all the fluid and start off with new fluid before I put everything back together and bleed it. Another thing I'm looking at, I'm looking at some of these trans leaks. So I might be pulling out the torque converter and looking at the torque converter seal, see if it's not gone. Uh, anything else I can seal from with the engine installed, but the torque converter seal is the main one I won't be able to access with the engine on. Anytime your tools or anything that came in contact with brake fluid, you might want to consider spraying it off with some brake cleaner just to prevent 
corrosion and rust. Just wet it all down to wash it off. Okay, so obviously I couldn't leave well enough alone. The block was still mounted to the hoist. I went ahead and brought it back in. I didn't want to be curious this whole time. And that's the clearance that we have to the primaries. It's way far away from the collector now. Still a little close to the primaries. I can probably fabricate a bracket and pull it away a little closer to the frame. And if that if I still like it's still too much of an issue, I can always just build some heat shielding over it. Yeah, so those headers are pretty beat up. And actually a friend of mine used to say, if you were to sandblast those headers, who knows how much header you'd have left. But in reality, that's what I want to do. I want to sandblast them and cover them in high temperature spray paint. Of course, this is after I take care of the issues that they have, especially the driver's side header, which is pretty beat up. And I know what some of you guys might be thinking. Dude, just buy yourself a brand new set of headers. And to be honest, I might end up doing that. But either way, I wanted to see how long tube headers would actually fit. What kind of clearance issues I'd have. And it's much easier to do that with mock-up parts that I can get out of the way and drop back in anytime I need. Versus having an engine that's already settled in there and is doing nothing but being in the way. So there's some other things that I want to do to the chassis and the engine compartment. As well as some repairs that I want to do behind the dash of the car. On top of that, I still have the repairs to do to the engine on the stand. There's also some non-Chevelle related videos on uh, late model repairs, diagnosing, and DIY stuff. So, I think we got some pretty good content coming up. The channel is sitting like right under 200 subscribers. That's the most subscribers it's ever had. So, if you stop in every once in a while, watch these videos, and you haven't yet subscribed, think about it. If you're, you don't know somebody that might be interested in, in these videos and this content, Chevelle stuff or DIY stuff, you know, turning wrenches or just might be interested in it, just point them in my direction. They might like it. If you're one of the older subscribers that has actually stuck around patiently and just watched some of my videos as they come out sporadically, you know, thank you. I appreciate you. You know, if you're a new subscriber, Check out some of my old videos. There's some good content there. You know, there's some interesting Chevelle stuff, DIY stuff. There's some pretty neat stuff there. If uh, comments, I enjoy the comments. I enjoy commenting back and forth, meeting new people, talking to people. You know, feel free to comment. You know, you got a question, you got just a general comment. Just go ahead and drop a comment. If you like these videos, give a thumbs up. You know. But anyways, guys. That's about it for now. Until the next time, God bless you.